Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines. Welcome to another episode of Community Conversations in Battle Mountain. Today, I have one of my closest friends that I've met in Battle Mountain from church. His name is Stephen Green. What do you think Battle Mountain needs? Great question. Um, well, the quick and easy answer would be that it needs love, but I think that falls short of a true comprehension. I mean, we throw that word around so much that depending when you say it to, it means something completely different. I mean, you, you, you say it to the wrong trucker, and, 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 and love means finding the, the, the right brothel. I mean, it, you know, let's be honest here. It, saying the word love is not very specific, so set the word itself aside and the meaning. I think what it needs is people who care. And you say, of course care. I care. I care very much about my bank account. No, 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 no. Care. Um, point in case, actually I had this happen a little while ago. Um, I had bad day at work, my my lunch and I got separated first thing in the morning. My lunch went one way, I went the other. I didn't see my lunch bag again until the end of the day. So lunchtime comes around, I'm starving. I, mean, I haven't eaten it for the last like, eight hours at this point. And two of the guys that I've worked with for a little while at that time, uh, each took a few things out of their own lunch bags and they made sure that I had enough to eat that day. And one, of course, I was tremendously grateful. They didn't have to do that. There was nothing that required them to do that. They just chose to care for someone that was in their area because they, they worked with me. They cared, you know. And I think that's so rare around here sometimes. You know, your problems are your problems. My problems are my problems. Why should I care that you don't have something to eat right now? You, you go home and get, get your own food later. Not my problem. Why isn't it? My problem. I agree. I mean, we share we share this world. We share this community together. Mm -hmm. You know, we, even if it's for a moment in a grocery store, we're in that moment a part of each other's lives. Yeah. You know, you guys in this town and at church are more family to me than my own skin or my blood. And, you know, it's, it's, it's strange, you know, we, we can change, we can change this place, we can change this world, but it, it goes with, you know, caring for each other. Mm -hmm. What, um, what are your experiences in Mountain Mountain? What have you, what have you learned personally? From or about that um, To be honest with you, Battle Mountain probably never would have been my first choice for somewhere to live. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of far removed. I, I, I was raised in the Seattle area, so I'm used to, shall we say, a lot more options. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I guess what I've learned is just the value of contentment. Of okay, these are my these are the things that are available to me right now. Or if I want to go out of my way, I'll go when I'm You know, these are the things that are available. And even then, that's still with those two pounds, towns included, less than would be my preference. You know, because I'm greedy and you know I grew up in a city. I want more. Okay, I want all the options right now here. Instant gratification. <laughs> Give me. 
and I guess what I've learned living here is, all right, if it, if it really has to be exactly the thing you want, you can wait a couple of days for it arrive by the internet. If not, then you're just going to have to learn to be happy with what's available to you. And that means edge berries, that means heaven help us all, the McDonald's here in town. I love my wife, she works there, and that's awesome. Not my preference. But just learning to find ways to be satisfied with what's available. Um, yeah, I mean, but then it's easy to say that. <laughs> Until I wake up one morning and man, I really want some Panda Express. Okay, I love orange chicken. Give him my orange chicken. So he's starving, probably, right? I don't really know. Oh, no, he's not starving. No, I'm not starving. Physically, I just, uh, spiritually. Spiritually, maybe. Well, no, I'm hungry spiritually. I wouldn't say starving. Uh, no, I just, I, I think food works really well as an example of wanting. Um, we were talking earlier in church today on a difficult issue. And. I personally feel like in my own life I've been suppressing it because I don't want to be that kind of a person. But now um, I feel like the Lord is bringing it up more and now I'm asking questions that are so basic. What, what do you think about race? Do you think that plays a difference in our American society? We've got blacks. We've got whites, we've got Hispanic, we've got some Asian. Do you think that um, we still struggle with that in our society? Um, well, I'd, I'd love to say no. I think I think that everyone's fantasy would be to say that such things simply don't have an impact on the way we live in America today or, or, you know, in Battle Mountain. And I just... I just don't think that's true, unfortunately. Not that such things should have an impact, because of course not. When it comes right down to it, you bleed the same color that I do. I mean, you know, I, I can think of, of nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing that would be just cause for me to think less of you because you. Skin color is a little different, and bone structure is just marginally different. Like, you have to get a professional with some very precise measuring equipment to tell the difference, and even then, you'd be guessing. Like, there's just not enough difference to make the kind of judgment calls that I think people make. Um, I remember earlier you mentioned something about this preconception that a lot of people carry about. The white male being fundamentally massive. I'm sorry. Did I say white? I'm sorry. The black man. Black man. I'm sorry. You know what I meant? I apologize. So, that's one. And by the way, the white male in the room is fundamentally lazy. <laughs> uh, but, by the way, you're like me. Job. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so, this idea that the black man is fundamentally lazy, I just, I mean, one, growing up where I did, there wasn't, there wasn't near so much, I'll put that differently, there was a lot more mingling and a lot more representation of various skin colors and nationalities. Um, I remember walking into my high school lunchroom and the whole room is just this all different colors, all different nationalities, you know, and then there was the Asian quarter over there. And I don't even start in that discussion. I don't know why they wanted to be alone, but apparently they did. So and I'll tell you I bumped up against, rubbed shoulders with, and had great conversations with people of all different races. Um, my brother-in-law, African American man, uh, great man of God, counselor. He's a father, and his daughter, my niece, already she's not even in fourth grade yet, I don't think, and she's already faced racism on the playground. It's not there. 
Like, lazy. Where? I, I, I don't, I, I've not seen a single ounce of evidence that there are more laziness in the black male than the white male. It just, it impacts us. There's no evidence for it needing to impact us. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about it is, it's literally who raises you. You know, you know, my the way I was raised is not the way everyone else was raised. And when you hear those words, sticks and stones, no words, powerful. Mm -hmm. Actually, God created everything with just the word words. words. <laughs> yeah. So. Those things got ingrained in me, and I'm still experiencing those things that happen in a moment of time today, which skews my vision and how I perceive the world around me. And it's like trying to uproot those things and plant something healthy. It's it's a bad. I feel like that's what's wrong with this community. If there's anything to say is. Some some of you guys have so much hurt, and you think that's who you are. Mm. You find yourself by your wounds. You made that your address, and then it's not the truth. I just wanted to accomplish that. The button for the day. About the power of means. He kind of goes along with him what I'm talking about. Because um, he was going through a hard time. He just, he just called to talk about it. You know, he's, he's in a rough spot. He just he needed he needed to share with somebody, and as we get through, we're working on this conversation. He's just using very vague language, hard time. He's just I'm in a dark place, you know, and all these things. He's making true statements. He's not like he's being dishonest. He's just he's not he's not naming for what it is. And I think there's something something to be said. Taking a moment to look at yourself and go, what names my music? How, how am I labeling things? How am I labeling things that are my, within myself? How am I labeling the people around me? And that has a lot to do with how we have relationships with each other. As there's a difference between recognizing your, your faults and your sin, and there's a difference between living there. Mm. Like, oh, I'm just a sinner. I'm just always going to make the mistake. Or I saw on someone's jersey or softball, it just said this name, it wasn't positive, and I'm thinking, why would anyone want to wear that? You know, why would you call yourself that? And I'm thinking my, to myself, like, when we say those things about ourselves, mm -hmm. we are... It's almost like we're, we're, we're perpetuating mm -hmm. what a, what's, what's the Bible verse that says? What a man thinks that he becomes or something like that. Yeah. What a man believes uh, that men or women. But oh, this, this idea is This idea of uh, what's in our heart becoming our idea. Right. Um, and that I think there's this concept of kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. I like to think of myself as being a very patient man, very slow to handle. Am I? That's a matter for discussion. <laughs> but but the last thing I want to do is go around telling everyone that I'm angry. Right, right. If, if I perpetually put out the message mm -hmm. for others to hear and for myself to hear mm -hmm. that I'm an angry person, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter how long my fuse was when I began. By the time I'm done with myself, I will shorten my own fuse without anything going on, except I shortened it because I declared it over myself. There's power in things we say, especially about ourselves. You know what I've also learned? This is a conversation I had with someone earlier this week. It was the power of complaining and the power of being grateful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's like, it's literally like it, we're moving through this matrix of just waves of life. Mm -hmm. Right now. Right now. Right? right now by my voice right now and it's like when we call something out and it's like that I don't like it or complain mm -hmm. it's really it's really uh, 
feeding the entire environment with that energy, mm-hmm. you know. And and then it's like, and then another one follows up, and then complain about it, something else, and then complain, and we we find ourselves in this in this box of I hate this and this and this and this. And and I want to encourage, I want to encourage because this is what I've learned is. When you can be grateful for just one thing in the morning, <laughs> as you can complain, uh-huh. it masks all the other things as well. It's, it's, it's it starts especially to, you do it first thing in the morning. Then you start to, it's like a snowball effect. You can choose one or the other. You can choose the red pill or the blue pill. <laughs> you can you can complain or you can reference, by the way. be grateful. Right. And when you complain, your day gets worse and worse and worse, and the snowball gets bigger. But if you if you just want to Daddy, say, I'm so grateful so for sad. this, it'll Daddy, snowball. Daddy, Daddy, mm-hmm. Dad, the movie is right now. Okay, thank you. I, it'll, I'm sorry, okay. it'll snowball, and you'll start to have a better day. And you'll be grateful for this person and that and everything and everything's like it's just it's how you how what you pay attention to. Mm-hmm. And if I can add something to that, there's there's another tendency I think I see a lot here um, in this community. Like so many homes um, are blessed with this tremendous income that is that exceeds their needs. Two, three, four, five, ten times beyond their actual, you know, cost of living. Because cost of living here in this area is really not high. And then you go to a job where you make ninety thousand a year. What do you do with the rest of that money? Well, you know, Black Friday. And so, and so we see this thing. I admit, I've fallen into it some myself. Where it's it's not complaining, it's not gratitude, it's want. Want more. I want more. I want that and that. And I want a bigger TV and I want to get a new four wheeler and a new side by side. I want to fix this side by side and sell it so I can make even more money to go buy a new side by side. It's like, dude, what's that time you actually went out and enjoyed your first side by side? I've I've had um. Okay, it, it's just it's 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 the want, it's the want, and we keep stuffing all this junk. <laughs> into our lives and what are we gaining by it? I, I haven't seen much gain. We have a lot of things, we have no friends. Mm-hmm. I want a lot of friends and less things. What I'm saying what is <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what I'm no, saying no, is you're right. What I'm saying is we value these things that have they're not they, they can't pick themselves up and walk around, they can't speak, they can't talk, but we value those things more than we value each other. And it's it's kind of scary. And it's like I had this is what I had the Lord ask me. He said, He asked me, do you want peace in the do you want peace? Do you want everything you want? Right? You want a million dollars, you want everything you want? Or do you want peace? And it's like, got the nice car, got this, got this, got this. But why do I want that? Because I think it's going to bring me joy and peace. And for the moment, it does. For the moment. Or do you want real peace, real joy, forever? And it's like, peace in here. Going by that thing, you get that dopamine hit, <laughs> and like getting drug at it, we get another <laughs> hit in a little while, and we just hold on, we check my face. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Anything say that with a Facebook addiction, I'll be honest, I have problems. <laughs> Anything can turn into an obsession, mm-hmm. and it's you know, sex is good, be fruitful, multiply. Mm-hmm. You know, kids. I like sex. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Sorry, it's true. We're not at church right now, but church is good. It, there's, there's things. A hammer is good, but you can use it. How you use it, you can build amazing things that can help you more. You can hit something with it. You can do some serious damage. And call it love. 
actually. <laughs> I'm afraid the answer, I think we see some of that too. These people that are almost openly abusive to their loved ones. I love you. I'm just going to point out your flaws all the time. Yeah. To send you. Make sure you know what's wrong with you. Yes, yeah, Steven, get it together. And it's like, in all actuality, you're condemning. You're 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 uh, you're bringing you're bringing that person's dignity down. Mm -hmm. You're not lifting them up. You're bringing them down. It's making them feel bad. Because I've had that. I've I've, I've done that. And I've had that happen. Where and it's easy to do that to our children, especially. Right. It's a, it's sarcastic. It's funny for the moment, but in the long run, it is wearing. It's wearing, and it's it doesn't benefit anyone. I think there is room for correction. There's room for it. You know, if someone has a problem, someone's got if it's something that they're not doing, uh, shows it, that does not show kindness, does show compassion, and they can use correction. There's room for that within a safe environment, which is something you have to build over time. Sans taking every opportunity to tell them what's wrong with them, right? It, if I spend a month hanging out with you and I can never give you an inch of correction at all that time, and then at the end of that month I say, you know what, something I've noticed is recent, you've got to struggle with blah, whatever. Now, not that I have room after a month to suddenly just now tear you down because you need no. But so, so right and capacity to share that correction is something that I think we build over time by building a safe environment in the relationship and friendship, right? Yeah, and that's the, in, in our actuality, you know, that everything starts from the heart, you know. Um, it's, you know, like going back to those, those sarcastic jokes. It just, it's, you know, it's not the person that I want to be, you know, um, because I start to question that, like, is that all I can say is sarcastically co condemn someone, like, you know, when I, when, when that's not who I'm called to be, Christ, but I'm called to just Man, I really like that shirt. That's a nice shirt. Thank you. Not like, oh, Stephen, that's a nice shirt. Where'd you get it at? Not, you know what I mean? Like, it, that just doesn't help anybody at the end of the day. And I think that we need to actually also be considered at our time. So, I think we're about done here. This is a great conversation. I want to have more conversations with Stephen. Sometime uh, to be all the time. We, go on we appreciate you coming to our show. Of course. Glad, yeah. glad I could. Maybe, maybe you get your wife to come too. That'd be cool. Uh, she's working right now, uh, and uh, it, it may be some work talking on camera. What? Is there any last things that you want to say? I know this thing's going on. Be excellent to each other. <laughs>